In my previous video, I animated through all of the Julia sets for z squared plus c along the real and complex axes. A question was asked about the transition point where the majority of the points go from outside to inside and why it seems to become very chaotic. I thought this might be a good start to discuss the relationship between the Mandelbrot set and the Julia sets for z squared plus c. But before we look at some cool pictures, let's first take a quick refresher on the math. The Mandelbrot set's iterative equation is commonly given as z squared plus c. So, if we have a two-dimensional plane where we have x as the real number axis and y as the complex number axis, all the points represent a complex number. We can take any single point, or number, and use it as c in our equation. We start with a z of 0 plus 0i and run the equation once. We then take that result and use that as our new z, leaving c as our original number. Rinse, repeat, etc. until the number does one of two things. It escapes off to infinity, or it hangs around the origin. Those that hang around, even after millions of iterations, we call inside, and those that escape we call outside. Now you may wonder why we start this process at zero instead of skipping that first iteration and load z with just our point number. Well, put a pin in that, because we'll come back to that in a bit. For now, let's just take a look at the Julia sets. Specifically, the Julia set with the equation of z squared plus c, since Julia sets comprise many types of equations. Go look it up if you want more. In fact, for the rest of this video, when I say Julia set, I will mean specifically the Julia set for z squared plus c, so I don't have to say z squared plus c over and over again. The very astute among you may have noticed that the Julia equation is exactly the same as the Mandelbrot equation. The main difference, however, is the value that we use as our c, which in the Mandelbrot set we used our complex point number, but now we use an arbitrary value. So for any point on our complex number plane, we start the first iteration with z loaded with our point number and some arbitrary value for c. At this point, the sequence is the same as before, we iterate through until the result escapes or it hangs around. As you can see, changing the C value can give drastically different results. Now comes the fun part. Since the two equations are the same, we can draw a direct connection from a point on the Mandelbrot set to a specific point on a specific Julia set. Consider our first Mandelbrot example, where we chose the point 0.5 plus 0.5i. We then started our iteration sequence with 0 squared plus 0.5 plus 0.5i. The same sequence happens in the Julia set when we use 0.5 plus 0.5i as our arbitrary c value and we run the point at the origin. The result of this is that for any point on the Mandelbrot set, inside or outside, there is a direct correspondence to the origin of the Julia set with a C of that point. In effect, this means that the picture of the Mandelbrot set is an index to all of the Julia sets for the point 0 plus 0i. Let's illustrate this by comparing the two. On the left is a close-up of a subsection of the Mandelbrot set with a target around a specific point. On the right, is the Julia set with a C that equals the number under the target in the Mandelbrot set, and we've put a target around the origin. Now, as we move up the Mandelbrot set, we can see that the corresponding Julia set changes. Those with quick eyes will see that the point under both targets changes at the same time. But don't worry, I'll slow it down a bit in a second. Let's get a little closer to the edge first. zoom in a bit to get more detail. Let's really zoom in here.
as you can see, when we are inside on the Mandelbrot set side, we will also be inside on the Julia set side. Closer to the main body of the Mandelbrot set, our Julia set, much like ice flows, comes together to form a more solid shape. Here we are well inside, even if we crank up the iteration level, points under the target won't escape. Let's zoom back out and we can see that as we progress deeper inside the Mandelbrot set, the corresponding Julia set becomes solid, finally reaching a perfect circle at the origin. connect to the Mandelbrot set in any meaningful way? The short answer is yes, they absolutely correspond to points on the Mandelbrot set. They're er, sort of. For the more complete answer, we have to work backwards a bit from Julia to Mandelbrot. Remember I said in the beginning to put a pin in the fact that we start at zero when we run our iterations for the Mandelbrot set, even though we could easily skip that step. Well, what happens if we don't start at zero? Instead, what if we offset the start point? Mathematically, this becomes the same as if we choose a point not at the origin in our Julia set. Let's look again at our comparison, except this time we'll leave the target on the Mandelbrot side at a single point, and we'll move the target on the Julia side. We'll use the point value from the Julia set as our starting offset value for the Mandelbrot side. As we increase in the positive complex direction, we can see that the Mandelbrot set does some pretty interesting gymnastics. However, the value under each of the targets remains the same for both sides. Here we travel in the negative complex direction, which produces the same result as the positive side did. This makes sense since squaring the number is the first math operation that starts the whole sequence. In fact, any direction we choose for our offset will be equal to the opposite offset on both the Mandelbrot and Julia sides. This is why all the Julia sets are reverse mirror images of themselves at any line that passes through the origin. Set as we move our offset out to a distance of one and travel around in a circle. We'll use the Julia set with a C of zero for this. As I said, the Mandelbrot set does some pretty interesting gymnastics depending on the offset we use. The closer we are to the edge of the Mandelbrot set when we start offsetting gives us a higher chance of running into these gymnastics. And this explains why the Julia set gets extremely chaotic right before our C becomes completely inside. And in effect, this makes a Julia set with a value of C a complete index for the Mandelbrot set at the point corresponding to that C for all starting offset values. Here's another way to look at this. Let's start with our good old Mandelbrot set. Now, let's overlay the Julia set for 0 plus 0i at its corresponding point and tilt it up. We'll remove all of the Julia points except for those that ride the complex axes. We can now do the same for the other points down the Mandelbrot's real axis. When we do this for all the points down the real axis, we'll end up with this funny looking triangle shape. And now we have a picture of all the points along the Mandelbrot's real axis with all of the complex-only offsets. Now if we scan in the complex direction, we get a CAT scan of the full Mandelbrot set with a complex offset.
the same for the real offset as well. We'll tilt the set sideways to get a more complete picture. slices are pretty and informative, but to see the full beauty of these mathematical structures, we need to go 3D. Here we have a three-dimensional slice of the complete Mandelbrot set as its offset sweeps up the complex axis.
structure of the Mandelbrot set with every offset. This will effectively show every possible Julia set point for Z squared plus C. I've been your host, Drew Kearns. Thank you for watching. Thank you.